Every day, the people of Hope College are leading, discovering, believing, dreaming, pursuing, serving, innovating, exploring, creating, collaborating, questioning, curing. We are finding new ways to do old things. We are challenging the status quo and building a legacy. We are pursuing truth. We are solving tomorrow's problems today. We are thinking globally. We are faithfully hoping. We are celebrating victories. This day and every day, we are strengthened by our faith. Bound by a shared commitment to building community and dedicated to providing our students with a world-class liberal arts education. Faithful. Welcoming. Transformational. This is Hope College. Hello to everyone, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Welcome to the second evening with advising session. Here in Michigan, I'm looking out my window and it just started crazy storming, crazy raining. And on top of all of that, it's about a million degrees out there. So I'm very happy to be sitting inside and I'm especially happy to be chatting with you all. My name is Shannon Scans, and I work in the Borichter Center for Calling and Career as the Assistant Director of Applied Learning. That doesn't have to mean anything to you yet, but eventually I hope to get to know all of you when you arrive on campus. My colleagues and I will work with you throughout your four years at HOPE on your process of discerning, preparing for, and pursuing your life after college. You may remember that during last week's session, Alyssa Boss did an overview of the registration process. And if you didn't have a chance to attend, no problem. You can view that video on the Tuesday Tidings section of the Freshman Registration website. I'm so excited to talk with you tonight about academic major myths and class registration. As you know, throughout our time tonight, we hope to debunk some of the myths about the relationship between academic majors and careers and also discuss the role that potential academic majors might play as you register for classes this summer. I'm joined tonight by Dr. Ryan White, who is the Associate Dean for Applied Learning and Academic Advising and the Director of the First Year Seminar. He serves as an expert on campus for students in a lot of areas and discerning a major is one of them. We will also be joined by Alyssa Boss, who, like I mentioned, was with us for last week's session as well. Alyssa is here to help answer questions related to registration and anything else that might pop up. While we have some really important and relevant information for you, I want to remind you that this is your session as well. And just as much as anything else, we care about answering your questions. In that case, we encourage you to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to ask questions throughout the session. Alyssa and I will be working behind the scenes, gathering them up. We'll save some of them for the end in a Q&A session and we'll answer some of them individually. My advice in terms of questions is to ask them. If you are wondering about something, I guarantee you that someone else is as well. And in terms of questions related to choosing a major, there are no bad ones. When I began college about 150 years ago, as a first generation student, I relied a ton on the campus experts that were there for me, and we hope that you all do as well. Whether you immediately know what you plan to major in, or if you have no idea at all, it's important to know at least what your next best step is in order to help us with that process and work to debunk some of those most common myths, I want to welcome officially one of the biggest student advocates on our campus and someone who you should absolutely get to know while you're a student, not only because he's Hope's resident expert on Harry Potter, but because he is among the many people on campus who are committed to helping you succeed in the classroom and beyond. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Ryan White. Thank you, Shannon. Um, I'm, it's great to be here again. I was uh, on with the panel last week. I'm, I'm glad to be back. Uh, welcome and greetings to those of you uh, joining us live. 
and welcome to those who are watching the recording at a later date. Um, Sometimes when, when the, the reason we're following up the, uh, last week's session on the registration overview with, with today is it's partly because sometimes when, when students go to fill out the registration survey, some feel like they need to know everything. Um, like, oh, I can't, I can't register until I know my major, but I don't really, I can't really figure out my major unless I know my career. And, and so you kind of build, build up these, these layers of, of uh, kind of feeling, feeling like you need to know uh, everything. So today we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about how um, that's not really the case. You don't need to know everything before you register for fall classes. And as Shannon noted, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how some of those kind of pressures to feel like that are built on uh, some myths. Now our session this uh, our session tonight is is it's kind of small. We don't have that many people on it, um, so I am going to see um, if we can if we can actually uh, maybe get get some folks to to chime in a bit. There's just a handful or so of us on this on this call together, so we're a little bit smaller. We can be a little bit more nimble. You, there's no pressure at all, um, but if um, if anyone is interested, I would love for you to, uh, I would love for you to, um, you can go to that, uh, that participants list on Zoom and uh, on that attendee list and you can, you can raise your hand and I'd love for, if anyone's open to it to uh, uh, go, maybe introduce yourself to, to the group, tell us uh, what your name is and where you're calling in from. Do we have any brave volunteers? Give, give us just a few more seconds. I'm not sure if I'm even doing these settings correct to give you guys the rights to chime in here. Well, um, I'm gonna ask my colleagues uh, maybe to make sure everyone has uh, the, the talking rights and can raise their hand and I'll, I'll kind of keep going. But if anyone wants to jump in, feel free to raise your hand on that attendee list. We can, um, we can bring you in at, at any point. Um, but otherwise I am going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the, the, the materials I had for you tonight. Okay, so this is, this is the, the agenda that we have. So I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about um, some of those myths that we already highlighted. And then I'm going to make some correct connections to some campus resources that we have at the Borkter Center. And then I want to Sorry, my screen is not sharing here. Let me try this again. There we go. I think that's better. Um, so here's the agenda. Sorry, sorry for the, the technical troubles. Um, it's actually, there's no technical troubles. It's just me uh, making some, <laughs> some mistakes, but here's our agenda for, for the night. So we're gonna start with some major myths. We're gonna talk a little bit about resources on campus, and then we'll, we'll end um, with some discussion about our curriculum um, and the, the information we need to keep in mind with academic majors and courses and the registration process this summer. So that is where we are headed. Um, I wanna first start with just recognizing um, students that I know the context some of you are are coming from um, you, you've been asked these questions for um, maybe years where are you going to, go to college what are you going to major in where are you going to go to college what are you going to major in and um, and and you've answered the first question right so that's that's wonderful and maybe you've answered the second question maybe you haven't but um, I just want to recognize I know you've been getting these questions you get them from people like me you ask yourself you ask your friends your parents ask you uh, and then you also start to get um, some advice right like oh um, a business degree that that's a practical option you'll you'll get a get a job with one of those right and then other people might might say well yeah but um, you got to really do what you love because if, if you know if you don't do what you love w what are you really doing uh, and then okay but what if what if you love art like let's let's be practical here what are you really gonna do with an art degree can you really get a job with an art degree do you really want to invest in an art degree right and then some of you have family hopes or expectations right to be uh, the the future lawyer or doctor or the first something in the family or to carry on the family business or, or practice or something like that um, so I, I put these 
these kind of questions out there just to just to say I know that many of you have been um, many of you have been getting these questions and people ask because they care about you and they want you to do well and to thrive and to and to be successful but I also just want to say um, uh, we know that sometimes these questions bring with them some anxiety uh, many entering college students feel some anxiety over their major and kind of career plans or, or lack thereof. So that's really the heart of the first half of what we're going to talk about now. So I'm gonna to move to what we call major myths. I'm gonna highlight four really successful people. Maybe you've seen some of these folks at a, another conversation on campus. We sometimes pull up some of these samples. Um, and the first person that I want to bring up is uh, Chad Hurley co-founder and CEO of YouTube. And he, uh, I, I've got, I'm, I kind of have some, uh, some choices here, the English, math, fine arts, computer science, French, right? So he's really successful. He, he, start, he started YouTube, just ran it for a few years, and then he sold it to Google in 2006 for like $1.8 billion. So really successful um, businessman, really creative. Um, I was gonna maybe pull up a poll for you guys, but I think I'm just gonna, with the, the small numbers, I'm just gonna keep us going. Um, but I want you to think to yourself for, for a second, what do, you, what do you think he maybe majored in? So he was, um, he was a fine arts major. So a lot of folks often presume computer science, uh, which you know makes some sense with maybe coding and, and YouTube, but um, we, we sometimes find that fine arts majors are, um, uh, well, of course, they're creative, right? And they, which, which somewhat by definition, they bring uh, a sense of how to view something and see part of the world through a different perspective, through a different lens and in a different way. And sometimes that can bring with some entrepreneurial ideas, how to, uh, a big idea, like how do we share uh, clips and images that we want to share with one another, with the rest of the world. And that can turn into something like YouTube. Uh, another person I wanted to share, James Cameron, well-known film director, um, directed Avatar, Terminator, Titanic, Sanctum. Um, what do you think was his major out of these options? Now you think I'm trying to trick you, right? Um, he was a physics major. Um, so James Cameron initially got into special effects, um, kind of that aspect of storytelling before uh, getting into the directing part of storytelling. His, um, his biographer said uh, James is part scientist and part storyteller, part artist. So I have uh, two more folks we'll share. Um, Shannon noted, I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I'm a Harry Potter expert, but I am a Harry Potter fan. Um, and so I'm pulling up JK Rowling, the Harry Potter author. She was a double major, so you can hardly go wrong. So um, what do you think she majored in? She credits, she credits some of her study with helping her develop the world of Harry Potter. She was classics in French. So classics uh, is the study of ancient culture and languages. Um, you'll study some Latin if you're a classics major. Uh, and if you have read or viewed any of Harry Potter, you'll, you'll recognize that um, perhaps some of, the, some of the names of objects, of people, of spells have Latin roots or they have some Latin origins that she kind of took and mixed up. And that, that background as well as her literary background with studying French helped her kind of craft that world that feels a little bit ancient and Gothic. All right, the final person we're gonna to share tonight, Thurgood Marshall, lawyer, um, first African-American to serve on the Supreme Court. Uh, really well-known uh, students. If, if, you, um, if you did any kind of social studies history in high school and you, you might recall a really famous case called the Brown versus Board of Education, Thurgood Marshall was the lawyer arguing to desegregate schools. Um, and he, like, like, like many, like perhaps some of your parents, um, didn't have one thing that he, he kind of had his eyes set on, but he had kind of a couple that represented here. And he started out in dentistry and then, and then shifted um, into law. So I highlight those four um, really kind of successful people um, just to, to set up uh, some examples for um, 
uh, for what we call major myths. Um, they kind of help debunk these a little bit. Um, these are things people have confused about picking a major or things folks have confused with the relationship between a major and courses or a major in career direction. Uh, and we're going to highlight three uh, tonight. So major with number one, uh, the idea that most people know their major and career goals when they enter college. Um, the truth is uh, a majority of students coming into college are unsure of their major. And even when you take uh, college students with a major, um, after there's an intended or declared major, about 60% will end up changing their major. Um, and another thing to keep in mind is that some students will end up designing a major at Hope. We call them composite majors, where you take a variety of disciplines and kind of craft your own um, area of study. So um, there's perhaps some pluses and minuses to the realities of each of these bullets, but they do work together to say like, well, it's really just not true that most people know their major and career goals when they enter college. Uh, major myth number two, this idea that I will only have one career uh, in my lifetime. That's also kind of part of that source of anxiety that some have in, in thinking they have to kind of have everything lined up before they can choose classes for this, this coming fall. Um, the, the truth is that uh, folks in your age demographic, incoming students, um, you're going to uh, most likely have quite a number of jobs, around 20 different jobs, jobs by the time you uh, retire. Uh, and another thing I think is really helpful and interesting to keep in mind is that uh, many occupations that some of you d will do um, within your lifetime, they, they don't exist currently, right? Um, so you are going to do some jobs at some point that doesn't exist now. So you can't major in that job. Um, how, how can you prepare for those jobs that don't exist yet? We'll come back to that in, in just a few minutes. Uh, the last of the, the major myths, the third one, um, kind of the, the worry or concern that liberal arts graduates are unemployable, um, or if I pick the wrong major, I'll end up in the wrong career, um, or that you can't get a job you know, with, with, with certain, certain majors. The, the, the truth is, um, uh, uh, at Hope, at uh, this liberal arts college, uh, you'll gain valuable training in areas uh, such as writing, research, critical thinking, evidence-based decision-making, a variety of communication skills. Some folks call these things, it depends on an article you're reading or who you're listening to, they might call them soft skills, and we'll call them transferable skills, and we'll just call them skills and habits and viewpoints. Um, but those are some of the hallmarks of uh, of the outcomes uh, of a Hope College education. And also, um, when you look at uh, a department, an academic department and an academic major, and you look at what those the graduates with that major are doing, they're typically doing quite a, a wide range of careers. Now that can vary quite a bit, uh, but this is where maybe we sometimes get to that question like, yeah, but what can you do with that, that arts major? Um, right. Well, we saw what we saw what um, Chad Hurley did, but you know what? What can you really do with that major? And you, you can ask that question for almost any major, really. Like, well, what you know? What really do our history majors do? And what really do our math majors do? And what really do our psychology majors do? Do they all become therapists? Well, no, they don't. But, um, these are important questions. These are good questions to ask. Um, and the fun thing about this question of like what people really do after they, they study a certain discipline is they're actually kind of easy for us to answer. And so I'll give you kind of one example right now. If you went to the Borkter Center for Calling and Careers website, they have this little tab there on the left called uh, what can I do with a major in? And this website is simply, a, 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 this, web, this page is simply a page that answers that question. So if you're wondering, well, what, what do people do in these different majors at Hope? You just click on one and then you get a variety of different uh, information about them. But I'm gonna give you one sample. If you click on psychology, for example, you'll get a variety of uh, pieces of information. You'll get different information about professional organizations with psychology and um, some trends and some other things. But you'll also get a list, a specific list of jobs where right now um, people are in these roles who are uh, graduates uh, with that major from Hope. So if you look at this list uh, here, this is from a few years ago, um, you'll see uh, there's all these different uh, 
there's all these different professions that our psychology graduates are doing. And you see there is some, there are some like clinical workers, there are some therapists there, right? Uh, but you also see a variety of, of, of other things. So the Director of Research Integration and Operations at the American Association of Retired Persons, Hope College psychology graduate. So what you, what you see um, when you look at the, um, the, the, the professional trends with majors is a little bit less of one particular job that folks do. And more what you see is like a thematic grouping. So if you look at this list of Hope Psychology graduates, you see a lot of um, social, <clears throat> excuse me, social related uh, work, human centered work, community work, um, helping professions. So you can kind of see like a theme and a genre of work, um, but it's really kind of broad. It's not just one, one particular area. So that really kind of captures how graduates in different majors really tend to have quite a, a, a wide range of things they end up doing and opportunities ahead of them. <clears throat> Part of the point for this section and this major myths piece is just to know that academic majors are not synonymous with with jobs. They're not they're not just like find a jobs button. They're very related, um, as we just looked at. Like we saw those kind of thematic relationships. We see those skills that we develop um, in our different areas of study. Um, but these aren't quite synonymous, and that's really really a good thing. And uh, here's here's why. Uh, so here is the data from a survey. This survey is called the um, National Survey of Employers on College Learning um, and Work Readiness. It's essentially a survey of a bunch of different employers um, asking and telling colleges um, what they want more out of of college graduates. So this is this is the work world saying, hey colleges, here's what we need out of your graduates. And everything on the screen here is, is high. There are other things that are, that are lower. Um, but you see communication skills, critical thinking, uh, being able to apply knowledge um, to real world settings, problem solving, ethical decision making, right? We see those transferable skills that we kind of were highlighting uh, earlier. And we also see the benefits of this array of skills um, when we look at Hope College uh, graduates in particular. So here's our class of 2018. Uh, six months after graduation, 96% of uh, HOPE graduates are in the workforce or in, in graduate school. Um, so we see kind of real tangible uh, benefit of um, that liberal arts education um, approach. And I'll, in just a minute, I'll come back to saying, to talking a little bit about what we mean by that. What is part of that approach? Um, and this is a part two. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of shift gears now, uh, partly partly to say, uh, so we've been talking about academic majors. We've been talking a little bit about careers. And we have a lot of resources on campus and a lot of investment of, 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 of time to support you um, in your kind of journey through picking your major, um, advising you, uh, preparing you for your career. Uh, but also, we, we recognize in kind of this this even bigger context. Um, so you'll hear this language of calling and vocation sometimes um, at Hope College. You'll hear it often. Um, we use both of those words kind of to mean the same thing. The, the word vocation comes from a, a Latin root, vocare, meaning to call. You would know that if you're a classics major. Um, and sometimes you'll hear this quote too. This is a, f a famous quote from uh, theologian Frederick Buechner. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. So you'll hear this language of calling um, at hope and, and, and what we mean and how, how that functions is we'll, we'll help you not only find majors and careers, but we'll help you think about um, who you are, what do you love doing, what are you good at, how do you figure those things out if you don't know them, and, and how, do we, how do we align your passion, your interest, your skills with what's needed uh, in the world. And um, we have a variety, lots of ways that that happens um, throughout campus. Um, one way uh, that we support that kind of work is uh, there's a variety of experiences we've outlined in like a kind of a four year experiential uh, timeline. So you, again, you would find this on the Borker Center's uh, website. You, you'll see at, at the beginning, we have a variety of experiences that you can um, 
get involved with it with that are really like discernment experiences. What we mean by that is just um, getting more understanding into who you are and what you're interested in, what you're good at. And then kind of some of these later experiences are more focused on helping you prepare and pursue uh, meaningful work um, during and after your time at Hope. Uh, so we, we have this, this outline, this skeleton there to, to support you in that journey um, throughout your time at Hope. So that's, that's kind of a, a, a big chunk of what I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, talking through some of those major myths, just kind of debunking some of um, what we assume is the relationship between um, academic majors and careers. I, and I want to shift gears now um, to, to kind of circle back and bring it back into um, some of what we're focusing on right now over the next couple weeks to this summer as incoming freshmen, um, thinking about classes, the curriculum, and what this information might kind of mean for uh, how we do our, our class registration this summer. I'm actually going to start with um, uh, uh, just a quick note, and uh, if you see me on campus, talk to me on campus, you might hear me say this again, because this is just, you might hear Alyssa say this, you might hear Shannon say this, some people will say this. This is just a good thing to keep in mind from day one right now to graduation day. Four things um, they need to always keep in mind to, to earn your degree from Hope College. Four things to complete. One are our general education courses. Um, I'll quick highlight that and those in, in just a minute. Two is, uh, are the courses in an academic major. Three is uh, one to complete 126 credits. Most of our classes, as we noted last week, are two and four credits. And then finally, um, to have a 2.0 GPA or higher. Now, there are some majors that have slight variations on some of these things, but in general, this, this is, the, this is the, the pathway to, um, to earning that degree. And, and I, I put that there partly just to set up um, this next slide. Um, when we talk about general education requirements, this is sometimes is what people refer to when they say like our curriculum, right? This is our, our coursework, our classes. Um, our general education courses, this, this is the stuff that everybody does at Hope no matter what your major, right? These different disciplines and the variety of choices and there's a variety of classes in each of these bullets, these are some of the areas and in, in, in one of the main ways by which Hope wants to help you develop that variety, um, that toolkit of skills and knowledge that we keep kind of referencing um, tonight. So everyone's going to do this, some, some of this work at Hope. Everyone will take a first year seminar in the first semester. Everyone will do some science or math. You'll do some social sciences. That could be political science, communication, sociology, psychology. Um, everyone will do some literature, history, and philosophy, religion, arts, foreign language, up through uh, college proficiency level two. Uh, everyone will take a couple courses offering global perspectives on different topics and everyone will take a health dynamics course. And depending on what choices you make, and each of these bullets has a variety of choices and different courses you can choose, um, you, you'll end up with a general education set of requirements that's probably gonna be in the low to mid 50s um, of how many credits it is out of your 126 that it takes to graduate. And I, I put this here so you can kind of keep a little perspective about the general education requirements, what they are, how much of them they are, and also to contrast that with a major, right? So um, different majors at Hope have a different number of required credits, and it really varies quite a bit. Here are some um, that are somewhat average. Uh, history major is 36 credits. The French uh, major is 28 credits, but that's beyond French 4. Um, so there'd be 16 additional credits if you started at French 1. Uh, computer science, 34 credits. Exercise science, uh, 39. So um, I, I, I put the majors in the gen, general education courses there so you can kind of get a sense of the size of the major versus general education courses. And I also, as we move into um, wrapping up and talking a little bit about um, majors and class registration, just want to note that most major coursework comes and is heavier um, uh, when you're an upperclassman. So uh, most of your major courses will not happen in the first semester, uh, your freshman year. Uh, the bulk of them will really come junior and senior years. Um, although you might, you may have some at the beginning, but most will come in your later years uh, of college. And uh, there's a few maybe exceptions. I, we say that now so that um, 
you, you don't you, that's one of the reasons you don't have to have your major figured out at this point because you won't take a, a, a really large major load in most in most cases your first semester um, there are some maybe exceptions uh, so that we are that we have some programs that are a little bit more um, highly structured uh, where if you were in these programs we would ensure there was at least some coursework you did uh, in your first uh, semester but in, in most cases um, your major coursework will come later so to bring this back to um, class registration this summer, so we kind of we kind of stepped way back and thinking kind of big picture, but I just want to remind you of so, some of the, the kind of the points of connection um, to where we're at now in the summer. Um, last week, Alyssa uh, Boss ran through um, different parts of the registration uh, survey. I'm just going to highlight a couple spots where the major related information comes in. So this is a screenshot of an early page in that survey where you um, where you can input uh, different areas of potential major interest or career interest, right? So this section, it's fine to leave none or to list undecided if you're not sure, uh, but if you're already settled on a major or have a variety of things you're considering, this is the place um, to enter that uh, information. Um, you'll also be asked um, a few pages later in, in the survey um, if there are specific courses in an area, in a major area of interest that you want to see in your schedule. And if you click on that link uh, in the survey, it takes you back to that freshman registration page, right, where um, on that landing page you see all, uh, all those different um, uh, majors and programs and you click on those and you get a list of recommended courses uh, from those academic majors, those academic um, departments. And so what you'll do um, if there's if there's some if there's a major you're interested in, you, you view those courses, then you can select yes um, here at this point in the survey and it will allow you to, to, to plug in the courses that uh, you're interested in in relationship to a certain uh, major. And uh, Alyssa said this last week, I just want to reiterate, um, if, if there are courses required for a major you're interested in in the first semester, we'll ensure you get those. Um, now, as I noted earlier, most courses and majors aren't required in the first semester. There are some that are. And if you indicate that um, there's a major you're interested in, we'll make sure you get in any required courses for that first semester. So this is kind of a low pressure thing. Um, and, and if there's an error, we, we can correct it uh, between now and fall. Um, but if you, if you indicate there's a major you're interested in, we'll make sure you're in any required course for the first semester for that major. You also can select no on this page. You don't have to enter uh, additional coursework here. Um, we then would, would give you a schedule with a variety of different courses um, from the general education requirements to uh, give you some options on exploring um, some different areas of, of potential interest. So that's, um, that's, I'm kind of starting to wrap up here. Uh, part of the, the big idea is it's, it's, it's okay if you don't know um, your major at this point for registration. Uh, you don't need to know that. You can go right through that survey without it. But if, if you are um, certain of a major or you're kind of leaning toward majors, uh, be sure to indicate that on the survey and we'll help um, give you an array of courses in both your major area and uh, general education requirements. So that's kind of my snapshot uh, through major myths and bringing it back to our summer class registration. Um, thank you for your time. I'm going to welcome back uh, Shannon Scans. Even though there's just a few of us, we're going to take some time and see if we have any um, questions that we can help address or conversations that we want to have. And again, we can maybe even have people unmute and, and chime in if they want. Yeah, I think that would be great. This, because we have a nice small group, it's a really good opportunity to just, like, we are happy to be as informal as we can. So please feel free to chime in with questions. We got three really great questions. And thank you, Ryan, for that information. Before we answer the questions, I do want to take a second and welcome Alyssa Boss, officially, a HOPE alumni, to our conversation. Um, as mentioned earlier, Alyssa works as the Associate Registrar and the Associate Director of Academic Advising. And in that case, there's no one better to answer questions related to registration and anything else you may have pop up. So welcome, Alyssa, to the conversation. 
Uh, we got three really interesting questions, I think, right off the bat in the Q&A. And like I said, please keep adding those, chime in with additional questions that you have. But let's start with those. What I love about the questions is one, they're kind of representative of students that are kind of on every end of the spectrum, which I think like if Ryan shared his story, Alyssa shared her story and I shared my story, we would also be like representing every end of the spectrum from where we were when we were 18 years old. Um, we have some students asking questions about double majors, some asking questions about composite majors, and some students asking questions about um, being completely undecided. And every single one of those is wonderful. We celebrate kind of every stage of this process. And we welcome the fact that even some students who, you know, are 100% sure about what they want to major in, you still may have a change of heart. You still may get a different uh, sense of calling once you experience new things at Hope College. So again, all of those places, wherever you are, awesome. Um, I would love to start maybe with that first question. And Ryan, I think you're a great person to answer. I'll let you drink really quickly. Um, I was brought, and I saw Ellen on here, a Diet Coke from McDonald's. So I've been drinking that as well. Um, Ellen, I know you appreciate that. But Ryan, one of the questions I think is, uh, that would be great for you is, what if you come in completely undecided? And I know you touched on it a little bit, but maybe go a little bit more in detail about those students who are completely undecided. If you are completely undecided um, when you come in, you're in, you're, you're like in a perfect place. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great place to be um, because that means you're kind of ready and you're open, you've acknowledged where you're at. And one of the reasons it's a great place to be is because you maybe haven't been exposed to all the options yet. Like most students in high school take 10 or 15 di different disciplines. And then while you're in high school, we're like, what are you going to major in? What are you going to major in? What are you going to major in? Um, you may or may not even know that there's 50 plus majors at Hope um, and if you haven't looked at them all and learned about them all, how would you know which is the best fit, right? So uh, coming in totally undecided is a great place to be. Our curriculum is kind of set up for that. I, I think I highlighted that um, a, a bit, but um, there's, there's time for you to try out different coursework. There's time for you to get involved in different co-curricular activities that will also give you a different um, different taste of different areas of like thinking and study and work and play. Uh, so it's really a great place to be. Uh, I just encourage you to embrace it. Um, and, and that doesn't mean do nothing. It means be an active observer, an active um, re reflector, thinking about how am I experiencing things, right? That, that's, that would be one of the keys coming in Totally Undecided is to have your reflection hat on and I would want you to be asking yourself as you go through different experiences different courses how am I experiencing this what's energizing me am I gravitating toward things are there things that are draining my energy and that'll help give you little tips and clues on maybe things to pursue but that's that's kind of the part that you can do there's also lots of parts that hope can do to support you you'll have an academic advisor there to support you you'll explore some in your first year seminar some different um, aspects of hope and also uh, Amy Freehafer um, senior academic and career advisor is leading a session next week and she's actually going to talk more about this in particular how to um, explore different aspects of study and work while you're at hope Yeah, absolutely. And to double down on that in terms of the things that HOPE can do for you, um, Amy Freehafer is one of our colleagues in the Borichter Center. And not only will you learn about lots of different options in the classroom, but there are offices like the Borichter that work with students one-on-one -on -one in a lot of different ways to help you decide kind of where are you. So a lot of people say like, well, explore what you're interested in. If you were like me at 18, you're interested in just about everything. So how do you take that information and apply it to classes or to other areas of campus that you might wanna be interested in? So the Borichter is a, a great resource as well. So um, Alyssa, you're up next. Uh, we have a question, uh, this one reads, do double majors require a higher number of credits to graduate? So welcome Alyssa with that question. 
Thank you. Uh, that's a great question. Um, and I'm going to kind of build off what Ryan talked about earlier, where he mentioned that one of the requirements to graduate is to earn 126 credits. And so that number doesn't change based on the number of majors or minors you select. We're still going to ask that you complete 126 credits. Um, and really it kind of varies as far as like how you would complete that on the majors that you choose to combine. So some of those smaller majors where there are maybe only 28 credits, it's totally possible to do two majors and your gen ed requirements and fit that within that 126 credits. Um, other majors, some of the ones that Ryan mentioned are a little more sequenced. Some of those have a higher um, required credits and adding on another major might make it so you just need to take more credits to get all of those requirements done. Um, so it really kind of depends on the major. Um, I mentioned this in my session last week, but 126 credits breaks down to about eight semesters of 16 credits. Um, so if you just kind of go full time for four years, you'll get those 126 credits. But a lot of students do complete more than that. Um, a lot of students might come in with AP credit or transfer credit or do some work in the summer. Um, so it is definitely possible to earn more than that as well. I'm going to jump in um, and follow up Alyssa uh, to, to know. Um, sometimes uh, students will talk with students um, who are asking questions about double majors, triple majors, um, and we just like to remind them um, a really great reason to do a double major is because you're really, really interested in two things. Um, but you don't really need to do a double major if you're just trying to kind of like have a really nice meaty resume. Um, instead, we generally recommend you would lean more into the major you're really interested in and then invest other time in uh, supplementing um, that study. It might be internships, experiential learning, it might be leadership opportunities on campus, it might be athletics. Um, but we usually try to steer folks away, not that the question, I'm not saying the person who asked this question is doing that, but um, we usually try to steer folks away from a second major just to kind of kind of pad the resume because there's maybe other things that would be a, a, a better use of your time if that's the reason you're thinking about the major. Thank you guys. Um, Alyssa, I think this one is for you too, and it's a good one. Is it possible to have one major and then double it with a composite major? So essentially you're, you would choose um, a HOPE major and then create a composite major as a double major. And if so, if that is possible, how do you go about doing that? That is a great question. And I'll start um, for those listening that are like, what is a composite major? Um, it's something that probably just a handful of students do, but is a major that you create yourself. And it's when you have a pretty specific interest and maybe Hope doesn't have a major that quite fits with that. Um, so there are a few students that create a composite major out of courses we have at Hope. And there's some parameters around the requirements for creating a composite major. You would actually work with me on that process to create your composite major along with um, faculty in a few different departments. Um, but you are allowed to have a composite major with another major. It'd be just like any other major. Um, but one of the requirements of a composite major, if you have another major, is that only two courses can overlap. Um, so you would want to make sure that the two majors you're choosing are pretty different um, in the like topic that you would choose for your composite major, um, but definitely is doable. And so once you come to campus, um, feel free to get in contact with me. My email is just boss at hope.edu and we can talk about a composite major. By the way, boss at hope.edu, is it's the greatest it's the email on campus. It's um, the greatest. <laughs> I'm going to do something really tacky, which is ask myself a question and answer it. Um, well, one of the one of the most common um, questions nobody's asked it tonight, but that we get asked, it, it happens quite a bit, um, is something along these lines. Hey, I hear what you say about all those different types of classes and gen ed and liberal arts, and that's great. But how? What's the best way to get my gen eds out of the way so I can get into my major? 
Um, and if you said that to me or Alyssa or Shannon, we probably we'd probably like jokingly say like, no, 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 don't you say get get those gen eds out of the way. Uh, and we really mean it. Like we have like world class scholars teaching your gen ed classes. Um, with amazing expertise and there's something to learn in every single class and it, they re it really is one of the places where you um, develop some of those uh, additional skills and knowledge sets and also when students truly try to embrace them and, and get everything they can out of them um, we find more and more people getting a spark in an area that they weren't intending that becomes your major or a, or a minor. So I want to encourage you if you're like, oh, how do I get that stuff out of the way to 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 really try to uh, uh, as best you can try to think about embracing uh, embracing those classes because there's something special in uh, in almost everyone. I think that's so helpful. And that was actually going to be a question that I like asked you as well. So I'm so glad you asked a question and then answered it yourself. Good job. Um, Ryan, I love, I've heard you talk a couple times about the idea of declaring a major if you're a certain percent kind of sure about the major. And I would love for you to share a little bit about that idea and maybe talk a little bit about what the process of declaring a major and then maybe changing your declaration would be for a student if they did decide to declare and then change their mind. Yeah, so so one way, uh, one thing to, to, to note from the top is uh, we don't actually have anyone declare a major in the first semester. Um, we don't, we don't allow it. Uh, for a couple of reasons that we've already really highlighted. Um, many folks who come with an intended major change it, a pretty high percentage. So in some ways, it's just like not that efficient to have everyone come in and declare a major. Um, uh, now there are, it, it, you might still have an intended major, right? We reference some of those highly structured disciplines. There's a handful where we'll make sure there's a class or two you get in if you, if you indicate that as one of your areas um, of interest. So in, in that way, maybe it's functioning a little bit like you have a declared major. But from like a, a process standpoint of formally being and having a declared major, the earliest a student can do that is second semester of the freshman uh, year. Um, and, and what that process looks like, um, it's, it's basically, it's like a form, right? Um, sometimes it feels not as ceremonial as maybe you, you might expect, but it's a form you fill out, you, you, you put in your name, the thing you're interested in, um, somebody signs off on it, and you're in that major. So it, it's a pretty quick process to declare a major. Um, and Shannon referenced like, well, what do you, what do you tell people on the percentage? Um, well, sometimes it might depend on what year they are. Um, but often when I'm talking to second semester freshmen or, or sophomores, I'll say, you know, once you're 50% or more certain that you're interested in a major, you might, you might consider declaring it and getting into it, taking some classes in it, getting an advisor from that department. That's one of the things that happens when you declare a major, uh, getting involved in any clubs that that academic department has um, so they can really immerse yourself in it. It's hard to really know if a major is a good fit just by thinking about it. And we have some amazing like counselors and tools and resources and inventories that you'll hear about more next week. Um, but we want, we want you to combine that kind of exploration and thinking with trying. So once, you, once you're kind of leaning into a major, we usually encourage you to declare it and get into it, um, but we don't formally allow you to do that until second semester. While I am kind of wrapping up, I want to give everyone in the in the call one last chance to post any questions um, before I do wrap it up. So please feel free to type right in there whatever questions that you have. Remembering there is no bad question. And if you're thinking about it, there are a ton of other people thinking about it as well. Um, but when I just I just wanted to share, I guess, when I advise first year students, sometimes the how a student will kind of approach advising is very kind of tense and nervous and with a lot of stress. And one of the things that I always talk about, and I know all of our advisors do the same, is really just to kind of like, our job is to remove that stress and to remind you, you're, you're actually not in this alone. Um, part of our role is to absolutely help you determine kind of what your next best step is. 
And that's true whether you have been sure that you wanna be a teacher since you were five years old, or whether you literally have no idea what classes you wanna take next year. We have a lot of resources and a lot of opportunities to work with you to help you figure out what, what your next best step is. So um, all that to say, I want to kind of begin that process of removing your stress now and helping you to remember that I realize this can feel like a big deal, that there might be pressure um, that you feel to come into Hope College having declared a major, and that just simply isn't necessary. And actually, as Ryan said, it's, it's not even allowed. You can't even declare a major yet. So um, please know we are absolutely here to help you. Um, and it's not just the three of us. Your first year seminar instructor will be your academic advisor. And we are all excited to kind of get started on this process with you. So with that, I wanna also offer the opportunity. I'm gonna look at Ryan and Alyssa, are you good? We're good, okay. Um, please feel free to absolutely be in touch with us as needed. Rewatch last week's information or watch it for the first time if you're looking for additional information on how to register for your classes. And please mark your calendars for next week. We're gonna get to hear from Amy Freehafer, who, like I mentioned, is a dear colleague of mine and absolutely brilliant in a million ways. And who's gonna be able to walk us through different kinds of tools that will help students explore interests and career connections that all kind of then have to do with classes that you might be interested in taking as well. So mark your calendars for next week. And with that, we thank you so much for hanging in there with us. The sun has started to come out in Michigan. We're definitely looking forward to seeing you in the fall and thank you so much. Bye.